I heard about the MOA so many times since I arrived in New Zealand. And I started wondering where I could see one. But I quickly discovered that this weird bird went extinct a long time ago. Luckily, I got to see one, or sort of, here at the Otago Museum in Dunedin. They are so impressive. They look like big brown ostriches, except for their fine downy, kiwi-like feathers covering their long necks. Unfortunately, there is another New Zealand species that could be here soon. Someday we might say they were the Hector's dolphin from the North Island. Related to the Hector's dolphins, the Maui's are in a much worse state. They are the smallest and the rarest dolphins in the world. The media have been talking about the oil exploration in their marine reserve of the coast of Taranaki and about all the protests against this decision. I started wondering, between the interest groups and the politicians, where are the scientists? What's their opinion? To try and find out a bit more, I decided to contact Associate Professor Elizabeth Slaughter from Marine Science at the Otago University. She has been working with New Zealand marine mammals for 30 years, so I hope she can give me some clarification. Hi Liz. Reading the news these days, it feels like more and more people think it is now too late to save the Maui's population. But do you think it is actually too late? No, I don't think it's too late just yet, but we really are teetering on the edge of extinction. Maui's dolphins are at the moment around 50 individuals total, and the IUCN, who does the global list of endangered species, when a species reaches 50 mature individuals, they already call it critically endangered. And so with Maui's dolphin, we were at that point 10 years ago in 2004. Now that they have dropped even further to 55 individuals in 2012 and, and fewer again, we really need to act today or tomorrow. I did some research and found that between 1970 and 2012, the population decreased from around 2,000 to only 55 individuals. How did that happen? That happened entirely through fishing. So the calculation of how many dolphins were there uh, before fishing started, uh, the way this is done, and this is a very standard method, this is also done exactly the same way for orange ruffy, for hokey, for commercial fish species. Calculation includes a population survey from today and then the number of individuals that were removed in the case of orange ruffy by the fishery. So what happens is the fishery starts, they count the amount of orange ruffy that is removed from the population and then they look at the response of the orange ruffy population in terms of any changes in reproduction or survival rate and then they use all of this information to go back and say aha in that case before fishing started there must have been this many orange ruffy. We have used this exact same fisheries technique for Maui's dolphin and have estimated the number that there were before fishing. Do you think the marine reserve is enough to save the population? No, the marine reserve doesn't extend far enough south and it doesn't extend far enough offshore. At the International Whaling Commission this year the agreement was that Maui's dolphins should be protected from Maungani Bluff in the north to Wanganui in the south and to 20 nautical miles offshore. So that's about almost twice as far offshore as the uh, sanctuary which only goes to 12 nautical miles. Ideally they would also create a protection corridor, a conservation corridor it has been called by genetics researchers from Auckland University because they have found recently that there is evidence that occasionally hectares dolphins from the South Island go up to the North Island west coast and realistically that is probably the only hope for that. 50 or so Maui's dolphins on their own can't make it. Really the only hope is that we stop killing them in fishing gear immediately and that we protect not only their current range but also this corridor to the South Island so that there can be a reconnection of that North Island population with the South Island. So the first and major threat to the Maui's dolphins is linked with fisheries activities. But what about the recent opening of the marine reserve to oil exploration? What do you want to say when the Minister of Energy and Resources 
said that there is negligible risk to the Maui dolphins from petroleum activity and that over 40 years of this in the west coast of the North Island, or Taranaki, there has not been a single reported incident where a Maui dolphin has been hurt by petroleum work. There are several problems with that argument. One of those is that what is happening right now is nothing like what has been happening over the last 40 years. The amount of planned expansion of petroleum and other mining activity in the marine environment at the moment is really out of control. It is growing exponentially. So what has happened in the past is not even relevant to the future, let alone a good indicator of what might happen in the future. The second problem is that in the past people have not been looking for problems. It would be like saying uh, this particular food item which causes cancer, if you don't do any research on the human population and you do not do a study to compare people that eat a lot of this food and people who don't eat a lot of this food and check to see if their cancer rate is any different, then of course you will not find out that there is a problem. So the decisions that are being made at the moment really are 10% science, 90% politics. It's become clearer and clearer that the politicians really are not very interested in the science, either are not reading the scientific material or have simply decided that for other reasons, economic or political reasons, they are not going to take any notice. The only logical science-based thing to do would be to try to get fisheries bycatch down to zero just as quickly as we can because of all the impacts right now it is clearly the biggest impact and it is an impact that can be fixed very very easily at no economic cost even. So recently a report came out from Whale and Dolphin Conservation who estimated that the economic cost of this is not very great. So it's a biologically it's a no-brainer, economically it's a no-brainer the only reason for not solving this problem could only possibly be politics. This subject seems so complex. Let's go and ask Tom Bro a few more questions. He's a PhD student here in marine science. He's actually working on the closely related Hector dolphins, so I'm sure he has something interesting to say about the Maui's. Ha, ah, here he is, checking up on the research boat. The Maui situation is pretty tenuous at the moment, at best, so we've got a lot of media attention at the moment, and that's because it, it really is the rarest dolphin in the world. So rare, in fact, that it's very difficult to be able to get any accurate information. Like what we do with the hectares, it's very difficult to do population um, surveys in the way that we do the hectare surveys. The current estimate for Maui dolphins is about 55 individuals. Now that's a real worry because essentially if you if you think about that in terms of demographics, then that means that you know roughly half of those will be female and then roughly half of those again will be reproductively active, which means that the fate of a species is, is resting on you know, sort of 12 to 13 female dolphins, which is not a very good place to be. And what about oil exploration in the area? So oil exploration we know that the seismic surveys and, and other associated development with oil infrastructure has impacts on cetaceans in other places. Have, we've never conducted any research about how that would affect Maui's, but we can assume that it would, they'd be similar to other similar species. There are there's some substantial risks involved with, with the oil exploration, both in, in the preliminary looking for the oil the surveys and in the development of oil infrastructure and also the risk, of course, from a, a major oil spill or a disaster like that. And so it just seems prudent to minimise any risk and potential risk to the Maui's. Unfortunately, we don't really have the ability to conduct a quantitative assessment of how the oil exploration or drilling or whatever else would affect Maui's because it's just so difficult with 55 animals spread over such a huge distance. We'd never be able to get the statistical power to test any reasonable effects. The, the sensible thing to me seems to be able to, to take a precautionary approach, just limit any threat that, that may you know, impact on the species. The Maui's dolphin are an iconic piece of our coastal um, ecosystem. They're important in an ecological sense as well. You know, top predators like this are important in maintaining food web structure and, and dynamics, so, so they're, they're important beyond their own existence. And, and they're important you know, in a cultural sense as well. They have a very strong connection to tangata whenua and, as, as taonga species. 
and yeah, they're just an iconic piece of our, our natural heritage and something that we should be charged with looking after. Thanks, Tom. Another problem for the Maui's is linked with their life cycle. As with other dolphins, Maui's start breeding quite late, not before the age of seven. Then, they will only have one calf every two to four years. This slow and late reproduction rate makes the Maui's even more vulnerable to any threat. While fishing still poses a major threat, it is clear that oil exploration is a real and immediate danger to the Maui's existence. Action needs to be taken now in order to protect the Maui's against their imminent extinction. The possible expansion of the current marine reserve as a tool to put them on the road to recovery needs to be discussed. While the scientists are calling for immediate action from politicians, the absence of reaction becomes a worry. There needs to be a serious discussion about what we value and how we balance the worth of an endemic species and environmental destruction with commercial interest and economic policies. Hopefully, the recent decisions will not mean the end of the Maui story. I hope that we won't have to come to the museum to see these beautiful animals in the future.